I'm just back from the bank where I've reminded them that this isn't a charity and that I am still in pursuit of happiness. Today we're going to finish up those drawer boxes. Now the drawers themselves. We're going to glue those panels on and we're going to turn some knobs. That's going to get us real close to finishing this project. But you can't get finished till you get started. I'll see you inside. I'm Roby Price, and welcome to my garage workshop. In this series, we're building a spalted pecan dresser. Odds and knobs. set up here at the table saw and I am going to glue the fronts on the drawers and in order to get a good book match and this is critical this was resawn and I want this to look just like that when the uh, for the top two drawers I need to make sure it's indexed properly so and I'm going to use the rip fence to do that so I've got these two flush up against the rip fence I have a couple of spacers there and there. This will give me the appropriate amount of reveal on each side. And of course I've got spacers here to protect the surface once I clamp. This stuff's so hard I doubt I could hurt it anyway, but why borrow trouble? So I will clamp these with some F-style clamps here, and then I will clamp all along this face right here to get good even pressure so that these things will glue and everything get a nice glue seam and everything will be fine. I'm going to get started on that in just a minute, but I wanted to show you something. I actually started the process of turning a knob. This was kind of an experiment, and I glued up a blank right here. As you can see, I've turned the blank, gotten it started. And this knob right here is the result of my turning efforts. And the shape of the knob is good, and it's nice and smooth. I think this would work really fine, except it's just really ugly. <laughs> I picked three pieces of wood that to me looked very much uniform, very much matching. And when I turned it, this end grain right here that you get when you turn a knob just doesn't match at all. And as a matter of fact, the sides where you dip into a single board in the middle and others elsewhere, that's no good either. So this was a failed experiment. I'm off to the shop to get some eight quarter stock. This is a little under two inches in diameter. So Although this was a valiant attempt, we've got to go back to the lumber mill. The good news is I've got some stock to practice on and improve my turning skills. So we're going to get out the Tide Bond 3 and start laying down an even coat of glue along this edge. I'm going to put it down. It's going to be thin enough, but thick enough. This is going to be a hard one. I don't want a lot of squeeze out, but it's critical that I get a good coating on this. So bear with me. I suspect we'll have some cleanup.
I'm at the lathe and I have already turned a blank. As a matter of fact, I turned a blank about yay long. You can see where the, the end stock is. And I've taken that blank and I've made a number of marks on it and cut it on the, um, on the chop saw. Now, these marks, you might look at this. This is one of my knobs. How do I get, why can't I get two out of this? Well, I, this goes in the chuck. It sits right in through here like this. So I want a little bit of room between the chuck and this. So I end up with a little bit of waste. But you know something? It don't matter. So there we are. I've got my markings already in place. This one helps me level up the chuck, the, the piece in the chuck, but I will go ahead and turn it and, and get it leveled out, and then I will level it out with a flute. I'm going to make the, the cut top right here starts on this one and goes down. This one right here represents the shoulder. So we'll go ahead and get started. And um, keep in mind, I'm not a turner. I turn when I have to. I turn to make furniture. Uh, so this is... Uh, they turned out real nice, but it's not really what I do. Adjusting the tool rest is a critical first step. You want it as close as you can get it without it actually touching the piece. That will give you a little bit more control over your tool. Additionally, I could stand to have a smaller tool rest. I don't like being that far away from the middle support. Note the speed. For a piece this small, that is very, very slow. Although I get the job done, I probably should have it at a considerably faster rate. Well, this isn't going to be pretty, but I get the job done. A little bit of sanding, that'll be fine. This is a burr. I try to preserve the edge as much as is possible because that has a tendency to chip out. And this is where it all falls apart because I'm using a scraper here to uh, to trim this down, and that's kind of that's kind of cheating. What I have here is one of those carbide tip square head scrapers. I'm using it here to remove material quickly.
here I'm switching to a skew to, to remove the material a little bit quicker. Although the carbide tip is sharp, all my tools are sharpened on a Tormek, and they are crazy sharp. I find that I have more control with this tool than I do the scraper. None of this material is necessary for the curve. So it's just a matter of removing the waves. This is another carbide tip scraper, but it's got a round profile. And that's what I use to clean out and straighten up the inside of the knob. Be very slow with this. At the end of the day, it's just a scraper. Anybody who's true at turning wood will tell you this is not turning. Just because I sped up the film a bit here doesn't mean I'm turning any faster. bit on the edge there but I think that'll clean up nicely. I'll do that with the sander. Now the next step is to get enough of this off so that when I sand it I don't have to worry later so that I can undercut that out of the way. That is still way too slow. Well, we finally got a little speed up. I'll also speed up the film a bit here for you. It's getting there. It's not as nice as I would like, but no chip out around the edges, which in a, in a wood like pecan is a real problem. I have some chatter right here that's gonna cause me an issue, but I think we can get that sanded out. We're going to hit the last of it with 320. I've got a pretty good head of steam up here. This will be the final, final sand. It's just as important to get the underneath side as it is the other because that's what you're going to touch. I'll give you a good look at it. Yeah. That's okay. That's not the end of the world. A little bit of chatter there didn't quite come out, but we'll make that work. Now, after all that, it's got to come off. And that can be interesting. I've picked up my skew and I'm going to use this to separate the knob from the base. You want a little bit of an undercut. You 
almost here. This is the part that I really care for probably the least. Two things to note in this sequence. The first, the camera angle is really bad and you can't see much of what's going on. And two, the speed is way too slow. I should be turning at a much faster rate and that illustrates that I'm just not quite comfortable with this yet. It's obvious I need some more time behind the lathe. At the end of the day, I got the job done and I guess that's really all that counts. Not too bad. Might be usable. I'm putting the final touches on the drawers. I've got this set up right here and I'll set them all up the same. Little cork there to protect the insides. And I'm sanding it down with my sander going through the grits. Starting at 100, taking it all the way to 220. After this, I'll take this over to the router table. I've got to put that bead on the end of it. And then I will actually hand sand it the rest of the way uh, back to 220. After that, we're getting very close to finish. I want a good solid surface to sand on, and that's why I have the support set up the way I do. I also like to have a clamp on the side to keep it from moving sideways. I'm at the router table and I'm set up on the other side. The original thought process was I have all this table out here to help out, and um, I think it's kind of a nip and tuck, -tuck situation. Uh, not too sure it really helps that much. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, and I've got to pull this way instead of push, and that, that's a different set of motions. That's because of the way the bit turns. So we'll make the best of it. Uh, I've got a quarter-inch beading bit in there, and that is to put the last touching finishes on the, uh, on the drawer fronts. And uh, after that, it's off to the finish. And, um, and this project is starting to wrap up. There are four cuts, and this is the one that I should have been on the other side of the table pushing it through. I felt like the other three cuts were okay. I had something to hold on to that was a little easier, but this one was considerably more awkward than I had anticipated. At the end of the day, it worked, so lessons learned. That pretty much wraps it up for this episode of Roby's Garage Workshop. I think we'll finish this one up in our next episode, so I'll see you there. <laughs>